I'm gonna actually I have to wait until somebody speaks into it to test it, so I'm gonna go over there and try to work with it for you. Test, test. Huh? He said he's gonna make a lot of it. Test, test. All right, I, I can't speak for the others that are going to come after me, but I can project my voice just fine uh, through this microphone system. So we're going to go ahead and kick off the uh, speeches or toasts part of the evening. And um, as I understand the rules from Janie, it's an open mic, but uh, we're going to go with the uh, parents first and then uh, family. Siblings. Siblings. Yes. Siblings, and then maiden matron of honor, and then it's open. So if you've prepared a few words and you're not one of those people, you'll just have to sit tight for a few minutes. Also, I'm going to be right up here by where the microphone is, and if you say something inappropriate, I'm going to tackle you. <laughs> Sebi? Sorry, Sebby, they tell you to start these things with a joke, so. So I agreed that I would kick it off, and so I'm going to go first with a little bit of a toast for Matthew and for Janie. And, um, you know, these are interesting things to do because you spend some time in the days and weeks before the event trying to determine what you're going to say, and, and uh, it's fun. Charles did a great job with the uh, pictures. And you sit and you look at all the pictures. You sit and look at all the pictures and, you, and the memories start flowing back. And uh, you know, I just think about Matthew when he was a little kid. He had the biggest heart in the whole world. He, he, he loved everybody. There was nobody Matthew didn't love. And I think that's still pretty much true. Although he has a special place for Janie. And it's been great to watch that develop as he, uh, as he met her and got to know her and that relationship grew, uh, we got to be a part of it. And, and it's awesome. Our kids, uh, all of them have been great, but specifically Matthew and Janie have been great to share their lives with us. Sella, you're great too. And as Sella would say, Janie, we're super excited to have you join the Sterling sorority. There's a few others here tonight that I know are also happy to see you join the group. Uh, but Matthew, was, when he was a little kid, would, uh, <laughs> Jennifer and I were talking about this, we would play games, and if I, if I lost to him, which I did sometimes on purpose, he would hug me. Aww. Oh, Dad, it's okay. <laughs> now he doesn't, he just tries to beat me at everything we do. <laughs> I said he tries. Um, but I couldn't be more excited about spending this couple of days with you guys on your special day. You know that uh, I love you both, and I wish you nothing but happiness and joy in the future in your life. And uh, I'm here for you in any way I can help. I would ask everybody to raise your glass and say cheers to Matthew and Janie. Cheers! All right, are you going next? I was going to. Oh, you want a hug? <laughs> Good job, buddy. I really have to use this. You gotta get it up on I could on just there. like talk to you two. No, yeah, you gotta I'm get it up on your mouth. Look at us, look at us. Say that Everyone's got it. Everyone's got it. Okay. This is not really my thing, public speaking. You might need a projection. I know. I'll try. Right up on your mouth. Okay. First off, I love you both very much. That's why I'm willing to do this, because this is hard for me. Um, Matthew, you've always had the sweetest, kindest heart. It's very loving, accepting, so protective of everybody you love. When you were born, Dad and I thought, you know what? We have figured this thing out. Because you slept through the night, you were so easy, and then we're like, nope, it was just Matthew. He was just the easy easygoing little kid. You were so sweet and caring. You gave all of the big squeezes and soft hugs. So I wrote that in the journal, like that's what you called it. And you always adored your brothers. And all your cousins, 
grandparents, of course you love Papa, Grandpa, adored them. You were just the happiest little kid, so full of love. And you just always made me want to be a better person and a better mom, because I was like, this little guy deserves the best, because you had the biggest heart. And so one of my favorite Matthew stories, which I had written in a journal, is about Michelle. Where's Michelle? Michelle's here somewhere. Michelle was one of my very best friends, and she was moving away to Florida. And I had gotten an email she had sent to our Sunday school class, so I was a little sad that it was about her moving. And Matthew came to me and said, okay, Mom, I don't know, you were, I don't remember how old you are, little, three, four, little, five. Um, he said, I'm going to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, pretend you don't know I'm doing it. So I got you the bread, you made it, you brought it to me because you just didn't want me to be sad. And that was you always trying to take care of everybody. And then you've heard this story before on 9-11 when you were three. And we were talking about all the people that were buried and trapped. And you said, don't worry, Mom. Rip Rockefeller, Jack Hammer, your little rescue heroes, they will dig everybody out and everybody's going to be OK. So you've always wanted to take care of everybody around you. So Janie, he's going to love you forever. And he will be your biggest protector. And he's always going to stand up for what's right and stand up for you. <laughs> I'm so proud of you, Matthew. <laughs> it's just been a joy to watch you grow up and become who you are. I love you. And you've chose this amazing girl. And Janie, the first time we met you in Auburn, I think I loved you immediately. I remember you said, I'm a hugger, and you hugged us. And I saw you and I thought, that is the little girl that I've been praying for. In my mind, I think it was you. I mean, it was you were exactly what I pictured for Matthew. I couldn't imagine anyone more amazing for Matthew. And I think Dad and I both thought, Matthew is going to marry that girl. And we adore you. You're so willing to help, so caring. You step up. You also help take care of everyone. You're a beautiful person inside and out, and we've loved getting to know you and so happy you're joining our family. So cheers to a life full of love and happiness and lots and lots of joy. I love you both. I love you, Matthew. Sorry, you gotta follow that. I gotta what? You gotta follow that. You don't know what she has like She's that. She gonna make us cry too? I don't really she have any. Me cry. Oh, who's Matthew crying? <laughs> Can we say it on the mic? Say it on the mic. Okay. You gotta put it right, yeah, up on your right, next to you. right next to me. So can y'all hear me? <laughs> Louder. Louder. Louder? Okay, so here we go. Mine is a little bit about expectations. Um, the, <laughs> The very, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to get through this quick, but I had a few words to say. Um, expectations. The first, the, I went to Auburn for a mother-daughter sorority weekend with Janie. And I get to the hotel and Janie, and I believe it was Madeline, met me, met me there. Janie was a little giggly, but never really said anything. And Madeline goes, Miss Branch, Janie wants me to tell you that she's talking to someone. Well, I, 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 I am not really in that age group of, well, I'm so glad she's talking to somebody, but you know, what do you mean? And she goes, no, 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 Miss Branch. She's talking to someone. So then Janie finally says, yes, mom, we're getting ready to go meet a bunch of people at a bar. His name is Matthew, but Matthew's on the quiet side. She's like, I think you're going to have to carry the conversation. And as the people who know my family, my mother, who could talk to a brick wall and have an absolute blast, 
did not really come to me. So I'm sitting there going, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to carry a conversation with somebody who's not going to really be able to talk to me. And what am I going to say? I don't know how much I'm supposed to say. I don't know how much he likes Janie. I don't know how much Janie likes him. But anyhow, so we get there. I meet all these friends. And then all of a sudden, here comes Matthew. And I'm like, well, you know, he's, he's quite nice looking. That, that, that's a good plus. And then Matthew comes up and he meets me, and I've never met somebody so chatty Kathy in my life. I didn't have to carry a single bit of that conversation. So I had to leave the bar a little bit early, went back, went back to my hotel. Janie, Matthew walks Janie back to the hotel, and she gets inside, and I'm like, Janie, why, why did you say that he was quiet? And she giggles, and she goes, Mom, Matthew was really nervous about meeting you, and he had a little bit to drink before you got there. <laughs> so I was like, well, that worked out well. That's okay. So anyhow, Janie, after I meet Matthew, she's leaving two weeks on a trip through Auburn for 12 weeks to Italy. So I'm like, well, you know, I don't really think I'm going to have to worry about Matthew because she's gone for 12 weeks, even though I liked Matthew. Jokes on you. I'm still here. So anyhow, yes, you are. So Janie goes on this trip that Chuck and I have paid for through Auburn. And we get halfway through the trip, and I'm noticing I'm really not getting called. I'm really not hearing about the trip. So halfway during the trip, I'm like, Janie, when you call me, you're always tired. You're getting ready to go to bed. You know, I really want to hear about this trip. And she finally confesses, well, Mom, I, I talk to Matthew for about an hour every night before I ever talk to you. <laughs> so I did try to remind her, well, who's paying for the trip? <laughs> I really would like to hear about it. But anyhow, so the last week that she's in Italy, she's telling me she's going to get home on a Saturday. And the next day, she's going to go to the lake with Matthew and a bunch of friends. And I'm like, mm, thinking in my head, selfishly, I'm going to get a hold of Matthew through Lane, who helped me out with that. And I'm like, I'm going to get Matthew to Birmingham so that Janie will stay with us for a little while longer. So I, I will admit, I, give, I call Matthew, and before I get the words out of my mouth, he's like, yes, ma'am, I'll be there. I said, well, I, you know, I want you to come. Say, yes, ma'am, I'll be there. So Janie didn't have to go through any anxiety of Matthew meeting her father. Matthew drove over, got to our house, met Chuck. Without Janie, we go to the airport. She's very excited. It was great. We had a good time. I think I didn't realize she met the brothers. Janie says she met the brothers. So then Matthew leaves the next day, and one week later, Christopher and Lauren are getting married. So Friday night, when we're at their post-toast, Hunter and Janie come running up to me, Mom, we've got to call Matthew. He has to come to the wedding tomorrow. And I'm like, well, it's not my wedding. It's Lauren's. <laughs> so they go and talk to Lauren, make sure it's okay. Next thing I know, Matthew's at my house on Saturday. We're not even there. He gets to meet Edie, who is over there. He meets Walker. He, dry, he gets Walker, picks them up for the wedding. He comes and meets the entire family, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I think this boy is hanging around. <laughs> and what? And then Janie caught the bouquet. And then Janie caught the bouquet. So I finally realized this boy is hanging around. So you start watching, because you know your daughter, you really, you're going to watch out for the boy who's going to catch your daughter. So I do want to say, even though... Matthew's been through some really good times. Matthew's been with us through some really bad times, and he's still with us. <laughs> and we are very excited about that. I will say you and I do not need to watch an Alabama-Auburn game ever again. We have done that once, and that is, that's all we need to do. Yes, that was good. But I want to say, first of all, keep God in your hearts. Keep God in your decision-making. I know you two have a great love for each other. I know you will go far. The expectations of what I had for my son-in-law, you've met every single one of them. You respect Janie for who she is. You let Janie be who she is. 
You take care of Janie more than I ever thought someone would. You love Janie more than I ever thought somebody would. I'm so excited for y'all to be together. We're so excited to have you join, even though you won't be a branch, but you'll be in the branch clan. But the tree, you'll be part of the tree. You'll be part of the branch tree. But I did want to say we're so excited for tomorrow to be able to call you our son-in-law, for you to be a brother-in-law. And I know that there's two little boys that can't wait to call you an uncle. So we love you both and can't wait to have you. Thank you. That was great. <laughs> Thank you. Love you. Love you too. Okay. There we go. Can I get a chair and a drink? So right about now, my uh, boys are trying to decide how long it's going to take for me to get emotional. But you would have lost that bet because I got emotional and started crying the day Janie told me she was going to Auburn. <laughs> well, you gave me the okay. Reluctantly, I gave you the okay. okay. So what Elizabeth didn't tell you is that she didn't tell me that Matthew was coming over until he got there to meet Janie coming back from Italy, and that they actually had not been on a date, they had just been talking on the phone. Well, Ted Bundy talked to the girl that he first killed <laughs> on the phone before he met her. <laughs> so Matthew, you're gonna have your hands full. Tell a few stories. When Janie was in like the second grade, we get a phone call from the school saying, Janie's being a little bit too rough at recess. <laughs> and I, Elizabeth and I, Elizabeth handles that stuff. I just think about it. Um, so we're like, Janie's being mean to the other girls. And she, Elizabeth goes up there and meets with the teacher and thinks that's what it is, and the teacher goes, no, she's out there on the football field, the only girl playing with the guys, and she's beating up the guys in the second grade. <laughs> so then I coached Janie. And Sarah Tate. And Sarah Tate. Where's Sarah Tate? And we're getting ready to tell a Sarah Tate story. But you have a very fractious relationship when you coach your own daughter, and you have really high expectations because they're a really great athlete. But we made it through it. Matthew, these are Janie's most favorite words. If she ever stumbles or she ever falls down in the kitchen or out in the yard working, look at her and in a stern, loud voice, you ain't hurt, get up. <laughs> I did that at a rec league game one time and she turned around and goes, yes I am, get out. <laughs> And that's the last time I ever went to one of her rec league games. <laughs> but we had the icicles, and it was travel basketball, and Sarah Tate played. Sarah Tate was my backup center. And my favorite thing in practice was, got, girls, you've got to be tougher than the girls you're playing against. And when you go to the basket, take the ball, and when you go up for a layup, go up through their nose and go hard. So Sarah Tate, late in the game, we throw the ball into her, she's under the basket, and so she sort of meekly throws it up there, and she didn't, and I yell, hit her in the nose. Well, I turned around and was talking to Kevin Kelly, her dad, who was my assistant coach. She walks over and punches the girl in the nose. <laughs> so, I've got to find my notes. And the problem is, I left my reading glasses at the office when Elizabeth called me at 3.45 and said we were supposed to be at the church at 4.30. I was trying to bribe some clients to pay me early so I could pay for all this. <laughs> but I was la I've, been, I've been struggling with what I was going to leave you with that was like change of life type thing. Oh, let me go back. I got one other story. 
So the Alabama-Auburn game that Elizabeth is referring to was a just fabulous comeback by Alabama. The Auburn girls were in the stands and the TV cameras were flashing and they were crying because they knew that our quarterback was getting ready to hit Mechie in the corner of the end zone for a two-point conversion. And game's over, and yes, Matthew and the boys and the girls and myself, we'd all had been drinking all day, laying out on the dock. And um, Matthew disappears, walks down to the dock, and Elizabeth walks inside and she goes, should I go check on him? And I said, there's not a cinder block and there's not a chain, so he can't drown himself, he's fine. <laughs> So I'm laying in bed. It's been months, weeks. I've been thinking about this. I got to get up and make a speech. I really don't want to get real emotional because then my three boys will make fun of me again. Um, it's four o'clock in the morning and I'm sitting there and all of a sudden I wake up and I start thinking and it comes to me. So I reach over and I grab my phone and of course it automatically lights up. And so I turn it back off real quick because I know if I if phone's in my hand and I'm headed out of the room, Elizabeth is going to think I'm having an affair and somebody's called me. So I go in the bathroom, close the door, and I, um, and I wrote this. As you get older like I'm getting, you end up going to a lot more funerals of your friend's parents. And at one of those funerals, somebody said, there comes a time when you pass away and there's a birth date and there's a date of death and there's a dash in the middle and the dash is the life you live <laughs> you get out of marriage and life what you put into it every moment has a future a present and a past the two of you need to live your life and your marriage for the anticipation, which is the future, the moment, which is the present, and the memory, which is the past. I want you all to embrace the dash, embrace each other, and embrace your life together. And I love both of you, and I love you. And you can have that. Thank you. <laughs> All right, who's next? Michael. I'll take it, although. I don't, I don't know how you're going to follow that. I can't. I can follow that one. I take it back. You guys can have it. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Mikey. Oh, no. <laughs> Excuse me. It's the footnote. Yeah. We don't need that part. <laughs> all right. So, <clears throat> hi, everyone. Uh, thank you all for being here. And um, I would like to thank my parents and the branches, of course. But especially my parents. Um, thank you for buying my dinner, as always. <laughs> I swear, someday I will try and get the check, but not today. Um, for context, uh, for those of you that don't know, I'm Matthew's older brother. I'm told that's obvious, but honestly, I do not see it. Never will. One of us is good looking, and the other is good at sports. <laughs> but speaking of sports, Matthew and I have always had very different interests, actually. Uh, growing up, I liked Pokemon, Matthew liked trucks. I liked Yu-Gi-Oh, Matthew liked army. <laughs> uh, but despite our differences, we really were quite the duo. Uh, we shared bunk beds, and we would stay up for hours playing in our room when we should have been asleep. Eventually, we actually got into a habit that I will never understand, where we woke up at 6 a.m. and watched cartoons before school. I've never woken up at 6 a.m. since then, voluntarily, but we would do it every day. 
by the time I was in high school, our differences actually brought us a little bit further apart. Matthew would come to my swim meets and cheer me on, and I would reluctantly go to his basketball, baseball, football games and not pay attention. In hindsight, that was not very brotherly of me, but it's okay. Uh, by the time I was in college, though, Matthew and I got closer again. He would come and visit me at Georgia Tech. Uh, one time we went to a baseball game, and Matthew got to go on the field and do some game, I don't know. My friends, though, and I were screaming so loud I was worried we were going to get kicked out, and Matthew would come back to empty seats. Uh, but I think also part of Matthew's interest in me being a college student was my ability to buy him beer, uh, which I did do, I'm sorry to say. Uh, one time he got caught, and uh, that was because my friend Paul and I bought him a case of little seven ounce glasses of Bud Light, uh, which we thought was funny because who would want to drink that? It's so inconvenient. My dad caught him and confiscated them and offered them to me, but of course I didn't want them. <laughs> Who wants that? <laughs> uh, I could go on about Matthew coming to stay over, stumbling around Georgia Tech, throwing up all over my bathroom, but I'll spare you. <laughs> wow, don't hold back. I am. <laughs> <laughs> As adults, though, we've, there have been many more adventures and travels, and I can honestly say we're as close as ever. I tried to come up with a sports analogy uh, for our relationship, but Sella told me that it didn't make sense, so I cut it. Um, what I can say, though, is that Janie is an absolute grand slam. <laughs> uh, when I, uh, so when I first heard about Janie, we were dying to meet her but she was in Italy, so I couldn't meet her, uh, which was disappointing. Uh, Matthew was sneaking away to talk on the phone with her for way too long. We also noticed that. Uh, <laughs> and uh, then I also, <laughs> I found out she was from Mountain Brook. And I'm not gonna lie, I was a little worried. We already had a high maintenance Buckhead girl in the family, and I was worried we could not handle another. Um, but. It turned out she was a delight. She's energetic, she's deeply caring about everyone, and always a fun time. She is the essential seventh member of our team, and we are all so lucky to have you join the family. Not just for your contributions to game night, trivia night, vacations, karaoke, dinner, arguments, or conversations, whatever they are, <laughs> but also because Matthew is your problem now. <laughs> so with that, Cheers to sports and to the biggest win of Matthew's storied career, yeah. Janie. <laughs> Benji. He's taking a break from work. All right, everybody hear me? Good? Okay. Uh, I am Janie's oldest brother of 10 years. For perspective, I graduated college when Janie graduated elementary school. So, uh, Before I get started, can we give it up for the Sterlings tonight on a, just a fantastic night? I also know we have a bunch of Auburn fans in the crowd and you haven't had much to cheer for, so that was for you as well. Um, when Janie was a very, very young age, my mom got me, Hunter, Chris, into the family room and asked us, what gender is Janie? This was before the turn of the century. So we all yelled girl, and that we were told that's how she was supposed to be raised. So guys, good job. We did it. Um, Matthew, I've really tried to like figure out what I wanted to say about you, but when somebody fits so perfectly, like don't contemplate it with words. You've been great to our boys, uh, which I know has been a lot, uh, giving me time to relax while you play with the trains. Um, you know, we got the opportunity to take them to a Braves game two weeks ago. Wouldn't have happened if you're not in our family, probably. And how much fun they had. So excited for you to be joining the family and uh, 
as my mom said, you've been through some tough t situations with us. You've been with me watching Alabama basketball games, so you know you know how to deal with it. Um, as I said, there's a 10-year difference between Janie and I. So how have we bonded uh, with the best social experiment out there? Survivor. Yes. So uh, we've had a lot of fun, uh, which the Sterlings may not know this. I appreciate y'all sharing your Paramount Plus account with me <laughs> so I can catch up. Um, but too. Me too. <laughs> me too. So one of the things about the game of Survivor is people are always afraid of the power couple. They're always afraid of the power couple and the power couple is always attacked. Why is the power couple always attacked? Power couple is basically an unbreakable alliance between two people who will always vote together. They were always looking out for each other even if it hurt their game. Hell freezes over before one of them betrays e each other. And as great as it is to be the power couple, I would ask that you make it a trio. I'd ask that you invite God into your relationship as well. Because as Ecclesiastes 4.12 says, though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. So I know you are losing the branch name tomorrow, but because of our love of Survivor, I feel it's appropriate you get voted out of the family tonight. <laughs> so, if anybody has a hidden immunity idol or an advantage and they'd like to play it right now, now is the time to do so. All right, after the votes are read, the decision is final. Person voted out of the family will have to leave. First vote, Janie. Second boot, Janie. Oh, that's coach. I was a coach. Third boot, Janie. Fourth boot, Janie. First person voted out of the family, Janie. Janie. The family has spoken. If you would please come up here. You want to blow it out or do you want me to blow it out? Snuff it. Janie, family has spoken. Thank you. Chris, Hunter. Hello, everyone. I'm not. <clears throat> I'm not much of a public speaker. I'm going to keep this kind of short and sweet. But I'm Benjamin, I'm Matthew's younger brother, and I want to start out with a story you've already heard, which is how I heard about Janie. Summer of 2019, Matthew, last time Matthew and I lived together, Matthew would go up every night to his room to talk to Janie for about an hour, at least an hour. And that's just, that's Matthew and Janie. They care about each other. They take time for other people. They're great. I also want to talk about the first time I met Janie. <laughs> it was a uh, some it was a rush event at our fraternity. And I had a cheeseburger in my hand and a dog jumped up and bit me in the hand right into my finger and Janie so quickly immediately took me up to Matthew's little first aid kit that my mom, my mom made us. <laughs> she fixed me up because she's awesome. She just, she was so caring, so awesome. <laughs> I'm really happy for you too.
just to Matthew and Janie, I'm not much of a speaker. To Matthew and Janie. I just, I just, I don't know, I just, I'm sorry, Janie, I love you so much. Oh god. Hmm. Alright. I'm gonna let my pregnant wife go first so she can sit down. And not cry. It's weird. Okay. Project. Wow. Okay, I'm Lauren Branch. For those of you who don't know me, Janie's sister-in-law. Oh God. Growing up, I did not have a sister, and I always wondered if I would be blessed with one one day as I got married. As many of you know, Chris and I met and fell hard and fast, but as soon as he told me that he had a baby sister, I remember getting so giddy. All I knew is that she went to Auburn, so I at least knew that we had that in common. Thank God. I could not wait to meet her. I wondered what her personality was like, what her hobbies were. Would she like me? Could we be best friends? Could she be the missing piece I've always wanted? I say all of this because, as many of you women probably do, I dreamed of meeting that man, falling in love with his family, loving his mom, and his sister becoming the sister I never had, Spoiler alert, that did all happen for me. And not only did I get Janie, but I got Reagan and Dorothy too. So I couldn't be luckier. I remember the day I finally had the pleasure of meeting you in person on the corner of Thatch and South College specifically, right in front of the Sanford lawn. I knew then that I had hit the jackpot. It's a rough life being a solo Auburn fan in the branch fam. Thank you. <laughs> Then along came Matthew after the long-awaited summer of Janie returning from Italy. There's nothing quite like the whole family meeting your sister-in-law's boyfriend for the first time at your own wedding, like you've heard. Not only that, but catching my bouquet, and that still didn't send him away. Matthew, thank you for also being a loyal, devoted, and obnoxious Auburn fan with me. I always know that I can count on you to be by my side screaming at the TV during the fall months. It's been a rough few years, so I'm glad we've had each other. Janie and Matthew, I've loved watching your relationship grow. You two are the perfect mold for one another, and it could not be more, not, for more obvious how much you love one another. Janie, thank you for being you. So selflessly and truly being the one and only Janie Branch. For now. You love so well, you care so hard, and are a true, genuine sister I never had. And I'm so proud to call you mine. Thank you, Matthew, for loving Janie so well and for fitting into our family so perfectly. Cheers to all my sterlings. All right, so I'm brother number two of the three of us. What is that? I'm going to count it. And I, it's seven is it seven years? Uh, that's sad for an accountant not to know. Um, which is great because Matthew's an accountant as well. So I will say, is I, I don't have anything prepared, so I'm probably going to ramble a lot because it's hard to come up with something so perfect for such a perfect couple. Is Janie has always been the glue to the Branch family. Anybody who knows Janie, she's probably the glue to most of the friendships and the relationships in here. You've seen it today of how she kind of got everybody set up on the stage, ready to go for the rehearsal, as she's gone through pictures, as she'll go through pictures and tomorrow, and everything that goes along with the next 24 hours. But I will say is one of the joys of my life outside of my wife and my soon-to-be son, who's going to have the best aunt and uncle, multiple aunt and uncles in the world, and my dog, Ollie, who is the best, but. I've so enjoyed watching the success of all of my siblings. And 
I know, so Charles, of course, the oldest one, is I had no idea what the hell was going on because I was still in elementary and junior high, had zero intelligence whatsoever. But being older and watching my younger brother, Hunter, more than likely will copy the speech for your wedding in a few months. But in this instance, watching my little sister, Janie, completely dominate on the basketball court. It's like a duck to water. I'm sure many of many in this room have watched Janie play basketball and her ability to knock down a three, she probably should be playing for Alabama right now. <laughs> I'm not sure many in this room have ever heard the story of how she went shot for shot with current Portland Trailblazer, Trendon Watford, who is a traitor to the University of Alabama. But in that, as we've grown older, clearly sports have taken, its, taken the back seat Maybe we play a little golf, we play a little tennis, we play a little pickleball here and there, but it's changed to now you watch the success of your siblings in their relationship. And this relationship has been so fun to watch, maybe not from the very, very beginning, because I had no idea what the hell was going on, I will say. We were hoping to get married in May, push it all the way to August because Janie needed to go to Italy. Worked out well for us because she now knows wine, pizza, and pasta which is Lauren and I's favorite three things. But I, I remember coming to my parents' house. I was so excited that Janie was back. We could finally get married now. And the first person I see when I walk through the door is this guy. <laughs> and I will give you credit. You jumped up off the couch. You shook my hand. Hey, I'm Matthew. I have no earthly idea what I am to Janie, but I'm here. And funny enough, as, a, as my mother said a week later, Janie walks up to me at Odie's and says, hey, I really want Matthew to come to your wedding. Is it okay if I invite him? And like any good husband, I said, go ask Lauren. <laughs> Luckily enough, Lauren was smarter than I am and said, absolutely 100%, please let him come. And that is kind of where our whole story began. Is the whole family together, we're all celebrating another moment in our life as a family, and now we're getting to do that again tonight. And I'm so excited for both of you. I'm so excited that y'all have found each other. Y'all are going to have an incredible life together. So I'm going to ask y'all to do something. Janie, please put your hand out. Flip it over. Matthew, please put your hand on top. You can squeeze it a little bit. It is your wife. About to be wife. About to be wife. All right. Don't make Chuck uncomfortable. Chuck's already uncomfortable. I wish y'all love, happiness, joy throughout your entire marriage. Matthew, I know this has probably happened very little in your relationship with Janie, but this is the absolute last time that you'll have the upper hand. <laughs> So, with that, here's to the Sterlings. I cannot wait to tomorrow. Let's have some fun. Love you. Love you, pal. Okay. I'm also not good at public speaking. Okay, sorry. Okay. Um, for those who do not know me, I am probably up until tomorrow, John and Jennifer's favorite daughter-in-law, Sella. Um, while we only became official family last year, Matthew, you have been my little brother since you were about 14 years old. I grew up with only sisters, so I wasn't really sure what it, was, what it would be like to have a brother. I remember pretty quickly, Matthew and I realized we had some aligned interests. We first connected on our love of consuming sports. I guess as Michael's girlfriend, Matthew had low expectations for my sports knowledge acumen. But when he discovered I am a Mets fan, a lifelong rivalry has begun. I remember talking about the Braves, Matthew's eyes absolutely lit up. A normally kind of quiet, sweet boy, Matthew would nonstop bombard me with stats and records, of course all favoring his Atlanta Braves as my team has done a cute little bit of collapsing at the end of every season, I can always expect a taunting text from Matthew reminding me of my poor choice in fandom. 
About five or six years ago, I finally found something I could beat Matthew at, backgammon. <laughs> I grew up playing with my family, apparently preparing my whole life to whoop my little brother. Whether we were hanging out at home, on a family vacation, or sitting on a be beach, when the prospect of a heated backgammon battle gets brought up, Matthew's eyes light up with that same spark as when he talks about baseball. It pains me to say that our record is looking far more even these days. <laughs> Springtime of 2019, Michael and I came over to the Sterlings to enjoy their backyard, as we often did. A few drinks in, Matthew pulled me aside and mentioned that he wanted to tell me something, but in confidence. I could see that familiar light in his eyes and was on the edge of my seat to find out what the reveal would be. Despite being quite close, Matthew had never shared much about his dating life with me, so I really wasn't sure what it could be. He mentioned that he had met a woman at Auburn over spring break who was really special. She was headed to Italy soon, but he knew that they would be getting to know, getting to know even more oops, about each other over, phone call, over long phone calls at odd hours. Matthew kept saying, I just know you're really going to love her. I was protective and also kind of naturally skeptical, so I figured I would wait to see. Wow, was he right. <laughs> wow. Wait, switch my page. When Janie started to first come to hang out with our family, it felt like the most natural fit. She is thoughtful, funny, and most importantly, a huge Mamma Mia fan. Some of my most dear memories are of us scream singing in the car while John white knuckles the steering wheel, thanking God he only had sons till now. Janie is one of the most thoughtful people I have ever met. Any gift she has ever given is carefully planned to meet a need I did not even know I had. I'm so honored to be able to stand by you, my very first sister-in-law. As I've enjoyed this beautiful weekend, I've seen an unprecedented light in Matthew's eyes as he prepares to be a groom marrying his favorite person. I would love to propose a toast to both of you. May you always bring a sparkle to each other's eyes as husband and wife. I may not get very far. Woo. This will be fun. We can still see you. I know you can, but but I can't see Janie directly, so it'll be all right. I've tried to, to do this speech multiple times this week. Uh huh? I've tried to do this speech multiple times this week as I drive home from work. I've never gotten more than a few sentences. Um, man, Matthew, I, th I think within less than 24 hours, man, you've won the lottery. There is no girl out there more beautiful, more smart, more incredible, and more naturally talented than Janie Branch. I am, I guess I didn't even introduce myself. I'm the third brother, the, 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 the closest in age. No one has known her longer and been closer to her than I think than me. We have played so many games together and had such an incredible time growing up. I have seen her through so many different things and it has been such a joy. I've also gotten to know you super well. Like you are now a really good friend of mine. We play a game together every Monday. How crazy is that? I think I can come back a little bit now. You are absolutely incredible. And I am so happy because as any brother who's had to stand up in front of their sister would know, it's terrifying to think who they, th they might marry. You found a great one. You have found a guy that all three of us absolutely enjoy. There is nobody that I think in the world that could take Charles as deep in sports knowledge as Matthew. It's incredible. And it might be mostly focused on the Braves, but it, it's pretty impressive. He'll take him in a, in a NCAA football as well. It's, it's, it's absolutely amazing to watch. 
But to you specifically, you have meant so much in my life. You've been an amazing person for me. You've always been there whether you've known it or not. Because I always think about you. My mom told Dorothy this, my fiance. She, it was a phrase that uh, Janie needed a hunter and hunter needed a Janie. I don't know about the first part because she's so tough she could do whatever she wanted to do. But the second part is the truest words I've ever heard in my entire life. Because I needed a Janie. And I'm done. Thank you so much, Phil. Good evening. You know, um, I'm Janie's great uncle. And I would be absolutely haunted if I didn't stand before you and tell you about who Janie was named after. Jane Crow. Most of you didn't know her, but some of you did. She was a wonderful, beautiful woman. And I'll never forget, I was married to Jane's sister, Shug. It was at Charles' wedding in the East Room. Janie was maybe 14 something. And Jane, as Jane was prone to do, came to me and said, Tommy, you need to go over and dance with Janie. And I happily did. Janie was a great dancer, a charming, beautiful young lady. And when I got through, Jane came and said to me, Tommy, is Janie a good dancer? This meant all the world to Jane. And I said, Jane, she's not only a good dancer, she does something no other young woman has ever done that I see. She looks you right in the eye when she dances with you. That made Jane so proud that night. And Jane Crow would be so proud tonight to see you, Janie. She would be so proud to meet you, Matthew. So I say to Janie and Matthew, a toast. May the road you walk Rise gently to your feet. May your path be slightly downhill and may the wind blow at your back. May the sun warm your face and may a mist cool the back of your necks. May you walk together on this road and when you come to a fork, may you take the same fork together and may you always return together hand in hand, arm in arm, for the rest of your lives. Here's to Jane. All right, you're up. It's all you. No pressure. No pressure. I know. Tough act to follow. Um, for those of you who don't know, I'm Edith, and I am Janie's uh, hopefully longest friend, but I think we've been playing on the golf course for forever. But I wanted to tell a particular story um, that involves Janie's uh, lack of appreciation for a surprise. If those of you haven't experienced that with her yet, um, I actually got a reminder, uh, Google Cal, um, on my phone the other day that reminded me on 
let's see, April of 2021 that I had left this note to myself in Janie's company uh, to go off on Sunday, May 1st of 2022. And in the subject line, it read, I, mu er, I read, <laughs> Janie thinks that she will be engaged by now, dot, dot, dot. In the text of the message, it continued on to say, is this true? On this night of April 13th, 2020, as we eat chocolate fudge brownie, Janie and I's favorite flavor at Mountain Brook Creamery, during quarantine, Janie thinks that she will be engaged at this moment in time to Matthew. <laughs> um, so obviously that came true almost to the T of Janie's plans, <laughs> whether or not uh, that date was shared with you, Matthew. Um, but as Janie has been one of my best friends growing up, that entailed the adoption of two extra younger siblings. And since you've heard from all of Janie's older siblings, um, I think Janie enjoyed having some younger siblings to boss around instead of being bossed around. Uh, Okay, um, but one of the more recent um, things when Janie would barge in the front door of our house would be some sort of detail of the wedding that we are all going to get to experience tomorrow. So I know you've had this planned for a really long time, and I know that we've enjoyed getting to be a part of that for every single second. And although you didn't appreciate Matthew and I's surprise of your engagement, and don't worry, we're not gonna try to surprise you ever again. I hope, or I'm speaking for me, I, I, I bet I'm speaking for Matthew too. Um, I hope that um, y'all's lives together are always filled with surprises, um, whether it be something small, like picking up dinner for one another, or something bigger, like your love for each other growing even further. Further. Um, I love you both and I appreciate getting an extra best friend in you too, Matthew. So, cheers! <laughs> no pressure, huh? <laughs> love y'all. Love you. Yeah. Alright, alright. Okay. Everybody looks great. Wow. I'm gonna start out with a big uh, War Eagle, Mr. Chuck. Happy to be here. War Eagle, everyone. I know we have some Auburn fans somewhere. <laughs> so I wanted to start out by just thanking the Sterlings for hosting this night. It's been great, and I feel like if it's any glimpse into what tomorrow's gonna look like, we are in for a treat. Um, so I kind of wanted to walk you through how Janie and I met. So we both decided as little 18 year old girls, we're gonna go to Auburn, right? Loveliest village on the plains. And so we do what any senior year high school girl does and we join a group me with like 3000 girls, all the same goal, trying to find a roommate. So we each send in our, we wanna live in the lower quad, we're going through recruitment, looking for a BFF, you know? And I get this message from a girl named Janie Branch that's like, hi, I saw your message. I want to join, like, or not join. Um, I want to live in Lower Quad too. Like, I think we could be really great roommates. And so I do what any typical girl does and go to Instagram and Facebook, maybe even Twitter to be like, is this girl normal? And a mutual friend of ours followed her on Instagram. And so I was like, okay, gonna call Virginia. And Virginia was like, oh, she's great. We went to camp together. There's enough Marywood people. Y'all can cover that base. Um, but I was like, okay. And then one of Janie's lovely older brothers, I think it was Christopher, decided I'll definitely, you know, I'll be the good older brother and drive Janie four hours to Fair Oak and four hours back one day just to have lunch, to just solidify that we could live together and be roommates. So we do and check that box and there we were, freshman year roommates at Auburn, loved every second of it. Honestly, probably couldn't have lived in a 12 by 12 room with anybody else, but it was great. Um, and so maintained our friendship, everything, knew we would always get along, ended up going on spring break the following year and this guy named Matthew Sterling was on the trip. Honestly, don't think I'd ever met him before the trip. And I was like, okay, whatever. Um, and we have a great time, go to the beach. 
And then it kind of dwindles down, and there's only five of us left the last night. It's me, my now husband, Jake, Sarah Tate, Matthew, and Janie. And so Jake and I are like, let's go to dinner 30 minutes away with his Jeep, you know, top off, doors off, so it's freezing cold driving down the highway. And Janie does what any girl does. She sees this handsome fella beside her and just kind of snuggles up next to him. And so Jake and I claim that we are the reason we're here tonight. Um, you're welcome. Can't wait. Um, and so from then on, we never stopped hearing about this guy named Matthew Sterling. About a week later, Janie calls me and she's like, I've got a formal coming up. What do you think if I asked Matthew? And I'm like, really? Matthew? And so she asked Matthew, I pick him up from the fraternity house, drop him off at the bus stop, and here we are. They've talked every day since, through Italy, through everything, and we've made so many memories. They were in our wedding, we're here tonight, so many Braves games, Auburn football games, Sterling doesn't have the best track record there, tend to lose when he's there, um, won't be happening again. But anyways, cheers to a life of love, laughter, and happily ever after. <laughs> All right, well, that does the uh, pre-ordered from Janie. If there's anyone else that wants... It's all about you, Janie. If there's anyone else that would like to proffer a toast, oh, come on. Hello? Okay. Just make sure I turn it off. There you go. I don't have anything written on paper, but I have a whole lot of years written on my heart. And um, Matthew, well, first of all, Michael was the oldest. And I had never known such joy and love in my heart. This is a, a perspective now from a grandparent. And then they announced that they were having another baby. And I wondered if I could ever love like I love Michael. I just, he consumed me. I loved my children, but it was a different relationship. This being a grandparent is nothing but joy and a little heartache when their hearts ache. So I want to share a couple of times that Matthew really put me in my place. He was four, Benjamin was one, and we were honored to take them in our motor home back to our beach house and spend a week with them. And I was out pulling weeds in my yard. And Matthew said, Mimi, didn't God make those weeds? And I went, ugh, he got me again. And I recovered. Thank you, Lord. Um, I said, Matthew, I'm putting them in the trash. They're going to the dump to make it beautiful. <laughs> he said that was nice, Mimi. <laughs> and the other time in the motorhome, same ages, Matthew said, I have God in my heart. And I, Benjamin had been kind of a pill, and I said, I can't wait for Benjamin to get God in his heart. <laughs> Matthew reaches over, puts his hand on Benjamin's chest, and said, Mimi, not to worry, God is already in there. And those, Matthew is a lot like his dad, he's a second child, he's all about everybody else, and seldom about himself. And briefly, the night we all met Janie was Christmas of 19, and um, a couple of days after, our whole family was at John's house. I mean, 
go to bed early if you want to bed. <laughs> but um, Jennifer does an amazing job of finding places for everybody. So Janie comes in, and we're all excited because we knew Janie was coming. And so all the girls gathered around Janie. She pulls out her phone and shows us somebody's dog. And then she showed us somebody's kids. And then she talked about this wonderful family. And pretty much the whole time I was with Janie, she just talked about family. And I thought, thank you, Lord, because that's who Matthew needs. They complement each other so well, and I could not be happier or prouder to have another granddaughter. All right, boys, I know that some of you have something to say. Hunter? Hunter? Sevy? All right, here he comes. Uh, all right, y'all. For those of y'all that don't know me, my name is Sevy Foss. Um, I am arguably Matthew's best friend. Arguably, all right? I said arguably. Um, I'm not going to lie, I didn't prepare anything tonight. Um, I'm going to speak straight from the heart, keep it short. Um, I've known Matthew since I was about five years old. We grew up together. Um, for the longest time I've known him, the guy was deathly afraid to talk to girls, um, especially in high school, and so was I. So when I got that text in college that he was talking to a new girl, um, I was dumbfounded, and first thing that popped in my head was, dang, he beat me to it. Um, <laughs> first thing that popped in my head, literally. Um, but, um, but then as soon as I met Janie in person, I was just like, this is, this is the perfect person for him, the perfect girl for him. She's awesome. Um, and just, I literally, I envied what y'all had because um, you guys have true love. Literally, you guys bring happiness to each other every day. And y'all are both selfless and just care about others. But most importantly, you care about each other and you love each other. And honestly, I envy that, and I hope I can find that one day. So to, to be brutally honest, I wish y'all nothing but the best, nothing but happiness. And I just wanted to come up here and say that because I love y'all both. And that's all I have. Boys, anybody? Anybody? Oh, here we go. I know. Okay, for those who do not know me, I am one of Matthew's younger cousins. I think we're like seven years apart, something like that. But we have a pretty big age difference. So from the time I can remember, me and Michael are almost exactly 10 years apart. So from the time I can remember, it's always been Michael and Sella. Michael and Sella, Michael and Sella. But for everyone else, it was kind of always up in the air. So I remember it was always the question of, do you have a girlfriend? Every time I'd see one of my older cousins, or a boyfriend, if it was Sophia. But I remember this one time we were over at your parents' house, and we were staying there. And I said, so do you have a girlfriend? And you said, maybe. And Jennifer stood in the corner and said, <laughs> and I was like, I was like, oh, who is she? And for those who do not know me, or, well, they told me who she was. But for those who do not know me, my one thing I want to do in life is travel. So I said, where is she? And Jennifer said, well, she's in Italy. And I left her immediately, right then and there. So I don't even remember meeting Janie, because as far as I'm concerned, I met her that day. <laughs> and ever since then, I think it's because you're the youngest of 10 years from your oldest brother. But ever since then, she's treated me not like I was the younger cousin. It's always just been like, I'm a part of the family, which I appreciate. And I love you both. And it's never been a question since the day I saw her Instagram profile picture that you guys were meant to be together. So I love you both. We love you. Thank you so much. That was awesome. There you go. Might have something to do with the fact that they took it to Taylor Swift a month ago. <laughs> Bo, you got something to say? 
I mean, you're afraid to talk to girls too, so. <laughs> Janie, I don't know your friends as well to call them out. I'm not much of a speaker, but okay. how can I follow up Sebi Foss tonight? Come on, give a hand for Sebi Foss tonight. <laughs> unbelievable, unbelievable. T the two of you, just thank you so much for having all of us this weekend. The Sterlings, the Branches, unbelievable. We just wish you nothing but the best. We love you so much. Janie, you've been the most amazing addition to our friend group, to our friend family, so. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being a part of our lives. And Matthew, we love you so much. So you're the man. We love you. To the Sterling. It's good for you. Uh, is there anybody else? Anyone? Anyone going once? Oh, Matthew wants to say a few words. Well, well, ac actually, I'm supposed to kind of close things out, so, but, you know, un unless nobody else will speak, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, guys, we really appreciate you, all y'all being here tonight. Um, it really means a lot to us that all y'all made the effort to come here tonight. Um, we love y'all so much. I really didn't think I was very much of a happy crier, and I told a lot of people that the last couple of days, and y'all made it really tough. <laughs> um, but I love y'all very much, and um, I, I think... We're, we're, I, I think we're going to wrap things up in terms of speeches tonight, unless somebody else has something to say. Um, I think it, what, what, what not? You give your speech. Oh, I'm supposed to give it. I didn't know I was supposed to give a speech. I mean, well, as, as, a, as a few people also said, I'm not much of a public speaker, and as I just revealed, I was not prepared to speak tonight, so. Raise one, three, two, so. Yeah, okay, yeah, there we go. <laughs> uh, but again, I, 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 can't, I can't explain, uh, words cannot express how we feel about all of y'all. Uh, we really do love all of y'all very much. We appreciate y'all being here. Um, again, I'm not really prepared for this, and I don't have a lot to say, but I think that kind of says it all. Um, Yep. Thanks, Janie. I love you too, obviously. Yes, uh, I love Janie very much, and um, you know, I'm, I'm really glad y'all are here to celebrate uh, everything tomorrow. Janie, I love you. Good job, Matthew. Uh, for those of you that don't know, there'll be an after party at Odie's. Odie's. The buses will be here to take you either back to the hotel or to Odie's. If you drove yourself, you're on your own. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, there are Uber codes. See Matthew or me for the Uber code. and uh, Or Janie. Janie has Uber codes as well to get you back to the hotel from Odie's. There's no bus from Odie's back to the hotels. You have to find your own way or we can help you with an Uber code. So thank you everybody for coming. Wait, 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 wait. And wristbands at the front door. Oh. Down for Who's going to have those? Are you going to have those? Yeah. There you go. Would you like me to walk up here with you? Yes. That would be great. Because <laughs> I don't know anything about Odie's. I know you love that. I, oh my gosh. Matthew, come, come, come here. Come here. Right, Matthew, y'all well, uh, separate. Matthew, turn around, hold the microphone. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Jamie. Janie, I love you. I love you. You're the greatest thing that ever happened. You are the greatest thing that ever happened to me. <laughs> Your dad is the most amazing person. Oh, no! Your, your mom is the most amazing person I've ever met. <laughs> your, your mother is the most amazing person. <laughs> no. Your mother. I, okay, now, now I'm confused. Yep. <laughs> your, your mother is the most amazing person no, I've ever no, met. Your my mother is the You're most amazing. Mother. Okay, yeah. this is confusing. Yeah. You're making this Just very confusing. Both of them. Both of them. We have the greatest moms in the entire world. I know yeah. that. So now I did my speech. Now I did my speech. Thanks Love to Chuck. You. Love you very much. You okay, I'm gonna give it back to John real quick. But as we get to Odie's, because I've done this three times now. Um, closer. I've done this three times. When you get to Odie, or actually, as you walk out the door. I'll be standing there. There is a wristband 
So when you get to Odie's, all you got to do is show the bartender your wristband and you drink free on John. Why would we stop that? So enjoy yourselves tonight. Thank you everyone for coming. Thank you for celebrating Matthew and Janie.